Before we look at applying the log laws, it's first important to clarify what we mean by logs. And first of all, we're going to look at log to the base 10. Now this is often written just as log, although it's technically more accurate to specify the base as you'll see in a moment. Now you're probably already aware that the number 1000 is the same as 10 cubed. And you're probably also aware that the number 10,000 is the same as 10 to the 4, and 100,000 is the same as 10 to the 5. Here we're talking about the number 10 being the base. So if the base is 10 and we raise it to the power 3, we get 1,000. If the base is 10 and we raise it to the power 4, we get 10,000 and so on. If we were to apply logs to each sides of each of these equations, what we would get is as follows. We would get log to the base 10 of 1000 equals 3. We would get log to the base 10 of 10,000 equals 4. And we would get log to base 10 of 100,000 equals 5. All I've done is apply logarithms to each side. I've applied logs to this side to give log of the number, and I've applied logs to this side, which is essentially just the inverse of 10 to the power of. What we're really looking at is an alternative way of expressing the same number. This is our base here, this is our power here, and this is the number that we're expressing as a logarithm. Again, this is our base here, a base 10, 10 to the power 4 is 10,000. So for now it's probably best just to think of this as an alternative way of expressing numbers. You can also work in different bases, although 10 is one of the more common bases. For example, you could work in log to base 2. Now you probably already know that 4 is 2 squared, and you may also know that 8 is 2 cubed, and 16 is 2 to the 4. Well, an alternative way of writing this, or applying log to base 2 to each side, we could say that log to base 2 of 4 is 2. We could say that log to base 2 of 8 is 3. And we could say that log to base 2 of 16 is 4. All we're doing is exactly the same as we did with log to base 10. So where this comes in useful, is when we have an equation and we're trying to find an unknown power. It could take the form of 5.5 to the power x equals 120. Or it could take the form of 0.15 to the power x equals 15. It really doesn't matter, but as it stands at the moment, the rules that we apply when rearranging equations wouldn't enable us to find that x. Our first step would be to apply logs to each side and then we would be able to find these unknown powers in the examples given here. So before we go too much further, let's just have a quick look at how we input logs into our calculators. Now from the image shown here, you'll see that there's a button log. Now unless otherwise stated, that log button will always be log to the base 10. And the reason we know that is because the inverse function, which is positioned above the button, is 10 to the power x. Now from what we've just spoken about relating to logs, you know that log and 10 to the x are the inverse of each other, the inverse functions. Therefore, that log button represents log to the base 10. So when we input a logarithm into our calculators, let's say, for example, we wanted to do the log of 120. All we would do is begin by hitting the log button, type the number 120, and on most calculators, you will also be required to close the bracket. And you'll see depending on what comes up on your display, normally it would have log open brackets, you would type in the 120, close brackets and hit equals. And that would give you the log of 120, which is 2.08. In another example, you might want to do log of 1450, in which case you'd hit the log button. And up here you would get log open brackets, 1450, close brackets equals, and there you would get an answer of 3.16. So it really is straightforward, but the key thing to remember is that that log button represents log to the base 10.